Hi guys, welcome back to Ingram Orchids and More. Today we're going to be doing another spotlight video about a certain Cattleya. And so here in my hands is one of my favorite Cattleya species. And I say it's my favorite and I have a lot of favorites. So if you notice that recurring theme, just bear with me. But yeah, this is one of my favorites. So this is Cattleya amethystoglossa. So amethystoglossa, what can I say about it? It is a bifoliate species. I believe it is a Brazilian species. Um, you have to uh, fact check me on that. I haven't looked it up recently, but I do believe this comes from Brazil, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And it is a very large species of Cattleya. You say large, uh, but the plant that I'm holding in my hands here is actually not that big yet. This is a second bloom seedling of Cattleya amethystoglossa, but these plants have the potential and will get extremely large if you... Um, if you grow them correctly and you give them a lot of uh, sunlight and a lot of fertilizer during their growing season, these will become very large, tall plants. And you're saying, how large? Well, I have seen some amethystoglosses, uh, without trying to exaggerate too much, I'd say probably the canes being around two foot, two, two foot tall, maybe 24, 36 inches, somewhere around there, maybe at the maximum. Um, I don't know how tall they can get, but I know they can get pretty tall. And it is a bifoliate cattleya, even though you will see here some leaves are trifoliate. But for all intents and purposes, it is a bifoliate cattleya. And what I'm holding in my hands here is an interesting seedling. So this came from Palmer Orchids, of course, um, where I work. But this is a selfing of triple X. So there is a variety of cattleya amethystoglossa with the clonal name XXX. So we just call it triple X. And that is a well-renowned amethystoglossa clone. And this is a seedling you know, from a self-pollination of that, of that clone. And uh, there's actually been quite a lot of variation. So triple X is a very spotty flower. And I'll bring this a little closer to the camera. This one does have quite a bit of spots, but triple uh, X I think has a little bit more. And here behind me, I've got another one. This is another seedling from the same thing, Triple X by self. This guy is just now opening, um, but I think this guy is going to have a little bit more spotting, maybe a little bit smaller of a flower. All right. And here is Triple X. So this is a clone of the, uh, the awarded Triple X. And as you can see, they're not blooming. Uh, or at least this one's not blooming, which is weird because usually all of the um, all individuals of the same species do tend to bloom at the same time. Triple X tends to bloom a little bit later for whatever reason. All of its selfings have started to bloom at this time of year. What triple X, you know, I think we're a month or two behind it. Um, what can I say about how to grow it? So these like it very bright. I would say probably about 30 percent shade. They will tolerate temperatures, you know, up close to 100 if they're well watered during the summer. And at this time of year, they don't seem to mind, you know, dips into the low 40s. Um, I do try to bring them inside if it gets really cold into the 30s. Uh, just being a bifoliate species, if, uh, if they do incur damage, they do take a long time to recover from any sort of damage or stress that sets them back. So just keep that in mind. But otherwise, it's a fairly easy growing species. I do like to grow these either bare root or lava rock, like a lot of my Cattleyas. This guy here is actually just a four inch pot that I just set inside of a six inch clay pot and it's growing with nothing. So it's crawled out of its four inch plastic nursery pot and is now just growing inside of its terracotta pot. I'll turn the plant upside down. You can see it's, it's well rooted, so it's not going to fall out of there. It's a little cattywampus in there in the pot, but it's just sitting in there bare root and does not seem to mind it one bit. So, as an experiment, I do not recommend that you do this, but this is my triple X, and I have it potted very unconventionally. So, shredded tree fern is the, uh, a material, it's, it's made from tree fern, uh, you know, the large ferns that grow really tall. Um, it's made from the dead cores of those plants that's just shredded up and mulched. And I find it to be an excellent medium for everything. And as an experiment, I just threw this bad boy 
and some shredded tree fern in a plastic nursery pot. And this goes against all of my better judgment and all of my advice that I would recommend for other individuals who are growing bifolate cattleyas. Um, it's, I think, a little too bit moisture retentive. It doesn't allow a lot of air around the roots. Um, but here you can see this plant seems to be doing just fine. But like I said, I don't think I would recommend this. I think I would like a drier medium. Uh, if somebody asked me how to grow an amethyst gloss, I would say you probably want something that's going to drain a little bit faster. But this was, you know, I was willing to take the chance just to see how it, how it worked. And so far, so good. It seems to be really liking it. And amethyst gloss, the fragrance. What can I say about the fragrance? I love it. I'm very particular about my orchid fragrances. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's very floral and soft. Um, I'm not very good with uh, describing how scents smell, but this is excellent, excellent smelling to me. And I think if you have the opportunity to grow one, you probably should. That's all I got.